<sighs> Hello, good people. I'm Dimitri. Hopefully this video won't be too controversial, but it's 2020. I have the means to enjoy all the games that I play in 4K resolution, but I choose not to. Although to be fair, the framers that I want to achieve and enjoy a really smooth experience isn't fully possible on a 4K display, even with a 2080 Ti and a 9900K. So my resolution of choice in 2020 is 1080p for basically anything I play. What do you think about that? Now for the last five years or so, my preferred gaming resolution has always been 1440p, but since the arrival of this new Cooler Master Monitor, things have changed. It's given me new appreciation for 1080p gaming and all the specs on this thing are kind of ideal. So we have high refresh rate up to 200 Hertz. It is a full HD resolution, of course. We have a slight curve that for a 16 by nine monitor, I thought would be weird, but it's actually not, it's nice. For creative tasks, this is a big no for me, but it does wrap around your vision slightly giving you a bit of an advantage. And the main reason why 1080p gaming is so important here is because of its size at 27 inches. If I had said those words a few years ago, this would be a big no for me, because pixel density here at 27 inches at 1080p isn't ideal. But as you'll see later in the video, having native 1080p at 27 inches is actually a benefit versus having something higher resolution at the same size and then lowering the resolution to 1080p. So here are all my reasons of why I choose to game at 1080p resolution in 2020, both for technical reasons, visual differences, and obviously for performance. All right, let's begin right after this. What does it take to experience a compact, high-performance gaming notebook? You want specs that can meet the most demanding tasks like a fast CPU, up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, ultra-fast NVMe SSD, and RTX graphics. You also want something that's lightweight and easy to carry around. How about a robust optical mechanical keyboard with per-key RGB lighting and a fast 144Hz IPS display? This is a new XBG Xenia gaming notebook. Check it out at the links below and game to the extreme. All right, so let me begin with a few reasons on why 1080p is so popular. Number one, gaming monitor pricing. It's so much cheaper to get a 1080p display that is high refresh rate than going with something in slightly higher resolution like 1440p and even 4K at high refresh rates are really inaccessible to most. If we look at really popular 1080p gaming displays on Amazon, they're usually at least $100 cheaper and offer higher refresh rate than the QHD models, but there are also exceptions where 1080p displays are crazy expensive and enter the price territory of really good 1440p displays. Like the Pixio PX7 Prime, we've done a full review. It's a fantastic display for the price point, including the Tough VG 27AQ. I'll link those below. As with my Cooler Master Monitor, it's a 165 native Hertz display. It's a VA panel with three millisecond gray to gray response time. You can overclock this monitor to 200 Hertz, but that is done through the control panel without any tweaking necessary. And we also get response time override inside the OSD that you can select that will improve the pixel response time because VA panels don't generally have the fastest response time and this way it helps to uh, smooth out those pixels when they're changing at 165 Hertz and higher. For the longest time I really wanted to go with something high resolution and high refresh rate so it could act as both as a gaming monitor and something for creative work but as you can see right now I have my 4k 60 display here and 1080p 200 Hertz and this thing is only for gaming. Now the monitor that I really want to try is the LG 27 GL850. And that is because it has an IPS panel, so beautiful colors, and it has a one millisecond response time at 144 Hertz and QHD resolution. So as a monitor, as a hybrid for creative work and gaming, it's a fantastic option. And reason number two, most likely you are aware of this one, is performance. Simply put, we gain a massive FPS boost when we drop from 1440p with the highest of possible settings to 1080p with the exact same settings. I'm playing with a 2080 Ti, which is extremely extremely powerful, but even the frame rates at 1080p with the highest possible image settings, I mean, the frame rates are excellent, but this is your best case scenario. The goal here was to not compromise on the image quality settings, and this is how 1080p really fits into that equation. Now, I was also wondering what about keeping the 1440p resolution, but lowering some of the image quality settings in order to get better frame rate, but still maintaining the crispiness of what are you looking at? And in some games, you actually gain better FPS by keeping the resolution at 1440p, but lowering some of the image quality settings. But for as long as I've been gaming, I always prioritized image quality settings before resolution. Just seeing muddy textures and poor lighting 
uh, is not worth it to me with a little extra detail, especially at 1440p where all these imperfections are visible, are more visible, I should say. And so that is why I really keep playing at 1080p even when image quality is important. And with the rollout of many games that support ray tracing, like 1080p is the maximum resolution that I'm willing to go in order to get really good frame rate while still giving me the whole RT experience. So I played Call of Duty Modern Warfare, a single player campaign, Metro Exodus, Control, all with maximum RT settings just because that that is the future and it looks so much better versus when RT is disabled. Maybe not for Call of Duty, but Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Metro Exodus and Control, absolutely fantastic. Another point about ray tracing is that NVIDIA is improving on DLSS or deep learning super sampling. So that gives you an advantage of a higher resolution display. So you can be playing at 1440p, but performance is not suffering uh, with DLSS enabled, but it does tend to introduce a slightly softer image at that resolution. So still going with 1080p gameplay is a benefit. And so with this prioritization on image quality and frame rate, I know that there is no compromise when I choose 1080p resolution. Now a really interesting technical advantage I've discovered with using a native 1080p 27 inch display is that it is actually sharper versus my 1440p monitor when I use that in 1080p resolution. And that makes sense because the pixel readout here is one to one versus when you are looking at a 1080p image from a 1440p display, there is a pixel interpolation happening, therefore giving you a softer edges and all the little things are not as defined as they should be. Of course, the 1440p image looks better, but when you're talking about lowering resolution to gain frame rate and to increase image fidelity by increasing image settings, that's where native 1080p monitors really are so important. Now, one more thing to mention is that this is my first time trying a 27 inch 1080p display, but both Mike and Eber have expressed their concerns because for some of the panels they've tried had exhibited really bad screen door effect in terms of like you be able to see the spacing in between the pixels when you're sitting at the reasonable distance to the monitor. Luckily, the VA panel used here on the Cooler Master display is awesome. So you don't get that effect. Everything is super sharp and I kept the sharp sharpness of the display at 50%, which is the default, and the standard picture profile. Just be careful with the 1080p TN options because there's some really bad uh, gaming displays out there that are cheap, but I mean, they're cheap for a reason. And the last reason why 1080p is so important to me is because of competitive advantage in multiplayer. I'm sure I am not the only one to do this, but I lower all my visual settings in BF5 and COD and CSGO, just to remove visual clutter, improve my frame rate and improve my latency too. What this generally does is remove all the visual clutter that otherwise make it very difficult to notice enemies. And even though BF5 has gone through a bunch of visual patches that make it easier for you to see your enemies and distance and close up and in dark areas, it's still a big advantage by lowering all the settings, like removing tessellation, removing shadows, removing bullet impacts, because it's such a fast uh, paced gameplay that you never really notice it. In Call of Duty, it is exactly the reasoning why I remove everything, just because there is no time to walk around and enjoy the scenery. Even the textures and the weapon models are not as important as being on top of the scoreboard. Of course, I finished BF5 and Call of Duty single player campaigns and the maximum visual settings just to actually enjoy the gameplay. But when it comes to multiplayer, visual fidelity and quality really doesn't matter. In CSGO, for example, aside from lowering my visual quality settings to low, I even change the aspect ratio to four by three and actually reduce the resolution so I have a stretched image, therefore giving me larger bodies that are visual on screen that makes it much easier to aim with. So there's that really big element of competitive advantage by having 1080p resolution and least amount of visual candy on screen. Let's go. 
So those are all my reasons on why I still game at 1080p resolution in 2020. Despite the hardware, it's all about giving me the best frame rate possible without compromising on the visual image quality. And I find that 1080p, especially when you're talking about a native display, I mean, 24 inches would look super sharp. 27 inches, not as sharp as what you would get with a 1440p with the same size, but it is totally enjoyable in both single player and multiplayer, open world, really pretty games, really simple games. I don't know, maybe my eyes are getting old, but I have no issues using a 1080p 27 inch display. But let me know which resolution and size of the monitor you play with and what type of settings you normally gravitate towards when it comes to new games, multiplayer, single player, whatever. Let me know in the comments. I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video. Time to grind.